Take a look at these types. We have a user with ID and name and a collection of tweets. And then we have tweet with ID and text. We also have two other properties, a navigation property to user and a foreign key to user. We don't really need these two properties in our domain model. This one is just for simplicity and this one is just a database implementation detail. Let's remove these and see what happens. Ok, let's first see what is this project. We are in Visual Studio 2022 and this is just a simple console application with .NET 6. We also have installed Entity Framework Core and Entity Framework Core.SQL Server. We have already seen our models and this is our DB context. And here we just provide a connection string to SQL Server. In our program.cs, here we just instantiate our DB context with delete existing database and then we create it again to reflect any changes in the schema. After that we create a user with a tweet and we save it in the database. Finally we fetch that tweet and we write it in the console. Since we no longer have user ID, let's just comment this out and let's run the application. If you want to follow along, you can download the source code from my telegram channel. Now let's go to the SQL server. Let's refresh the databases and this is our database. Let's go to tables and tweets. Let's see the columns. As you can see, we have user ID as a foreign key here, even though we removed it. And let's see what is the data. As you can see, we have user ID with ID of 1 to the user which is stored in the users. So what's going on here? This is called a shadow property, a column that exists in our database table, but it does not exist in our .NET entity type. As you can see here, we no longer have user ID, but EF Core is still managing that property for us. Any change to the value and the state of shadow properties are maintained purely in the change tracker. So let's see how do we retrieve that value and how we can use it in the queries. Now let's get back to program.cs, uncomment this and let's get the user ID. We get user ID by using db.entry and we pass in our entity and then we get our property that we want by specifying the type of the property which here is a nullable int because this is the default behavior in entity framework for creating shadow properties for foreign keys. They are nullable by default. I'll show you how to change this in a moment. And after that, we need to pass the name of the property, which is by convention the name of the other entity with an ID. So it's user ID. And then we can use current value. You can also change the value just like this. You can change it by doing this, which we don't want to do that yet. And now we can use this user ID here to show the value of it. Now let's write a query for getting tweets with user ID 1. How do we do that? Let's write it here. Where tweets equals db.tweets.where And here we use ef functions. ef.property of type nullable int we pass in the entity and then we say the property name which is user id and equals equals one dot to array and here let's just print out the first one's text Okay, let's run the application. And as you can see, we have shadow properties are awesome. Which is the text of the first tweet. Now let's configure our shadow properties. We go back to models inside our DB context. We override the method on model creating. Let's remove this line and here we say model builder dot entity 
of type tweet has one of type user and with many of tweets which this tweet is the same collection here and then we say has foreign key we can specify the name and we can specify whatever we want to do but let's just stick to user id and let's make it required so it's no longer nullable let's also add another shadow property here this one is ours model builder dot entity of type tweet and let's say a property of type date time and we name it last modified now save it and we go to program.cs let's remove these nullables and let's run the application and see the results okay now let's check the database this is our database let's refresh this and as you can see user id is no longer nullable and we also have a last modified here that's it that's all about shadow properties in the next video i'll show you a more useful example of using shadow properties so if you don't want to miss that subscribe to the channel and enable the notification bell until next time, adios amigos.